painful atmosphere of all kinds of sufferings continue to torture us in Nigeria. The debilitating poverty now labeling us the poverty capital of the world. Pains of anger, deep irritation from extreme unhappiness caused by unwarranted physical and mental suffering in a country flowing with milk and honey. Nigeria is flowing with milk and honey. Hunger and the concomitant anger finding yourself confronted with the excruciating, unaffordable food stuffs, coupled with the agonizing scarcity of funds. Yes, no cash, no money. All this make this period weird, tending towards apocalyptic bearings, as being recorded. Critical times hard to deal with will be here. You may say it's global, but my compatriots, Nigerians, will tell you that the Nigerian version is a special brand. Yes, they are right. What we are facing in Nigeria is of a demonic brand. You just naturally don't feel comfortable to ask Nigerians to sacrifice anything more. Anything more cannot be sacrificed. But kudos to our various social activists. The minds of our patriotic social activists calmly and constantly stay at work, logged into a continuous process of reflections carefully examining the missing dimensions in our errors of omissions and commissions. Errors of omissions and commissions that have landed us into this quagmire. Listen to Tayo Adishino describing how it all stands for us now. Well, I quite often uh, speak about what I have called civilizational collapse. Civilizational collapse has resulted from the decay in all ramifications of the structures of society that we have seen in recent years. Oh yes, we are still on it. The difficult times continue to roll on, unfolding to all of us all with different optics. Take for example the difficult and unwanted embarrassing situation between the governors and the presidencies as regards giving back, as regards caring for our compatriots. What is happening between the governors and the presidency is very instructive to all Nigerians. We continue to watch the whole details as they continue to unfold. We must be careful. And as it stands now, in Nigeria, we are present on the global village. We must all realize that the world has become a global village. Therefore, whatever the events, either in Abuja, or Lagos, London, New York, or Washington, it takes only seconds for all the details to be on the global stage. Even as it is now, at the moment, all lovers of democracy in the progressive world are symbolically on their knees, supplicating the heavens to intervene and make use of all the great institutions in America to prevent that great nation from going down the precipice to a civil war. Oh, we are seeing it all. Yes because it's all on the global stage in a global community a global village that we are all in at the moment 
Nothing is hidden anymore. Our prayers for now, America, must cross this next bridge. However, it is impressive, in fact, a delight, that from this same America, Nigerians can boast of two good friends, by name Ruth McLean and Ismail Awar of the New York Times. Ruth and Ismail, with a powerful article in the New York Times, empathized with Nigerians. They came out with articles that shows that they are concerned with our present predicament in Nigeria. Millions of Nigerians find the article empathic with what we are going through and experiencing at the moment. Our present quagmire deserves compassionate understanding. We observe that this article, written by Ruth and Awal, was rehashed severally in our many newspapers. The only thing now is that Nigerians will want the same Ruth McLean and Ismail Awal to please enlighten our their friend Bill Gates that Nigeria already paying more than enough taxes. Nigerians are overstretched, overburdened with all form of taxes at the moment. For example, Lekon Shote, in his ever poignant column of the Punch of May 22, 2024, in the Punch, nailed the point excellently well. Hear him. Someone wonders why the government encourages citizens to embrace digital banking and then turns around to tax them for the compliance. Is this a trap set to take the money of Nigerians? With ease, this tax will certainly discourage Nigerians from banking their money and defeat the IMF-inspired cashless banking policy of the federal government. But what was CBN's point in introducing the cybersecurity levy if it could eventually Step it down. With our good friend Bill Gates coming to Nigeria to say our tax situation needs to be attended to, does it mean that tax Massachusetts now coming to Nigeria? We'll wait and see. Bayo Ononuga is one of a competent and indefatigable journalist. Bayo Ononuga is good, a good colleague, a well-bred journalist. But unfortunately, there is little we could do as a rescue exercise. Why? Because the graphics and the optics on the ground are too negative, too hostile. The optics and the graphics do not help at all. No matter how uninformed we are, all my compatriots now can to some considerable extent explain, give some explanation for part of our present predicament. I'm talking about the poverty. I'm talking about the scarcity of funds and almost unaffordable food items. You can't touch the foodstuffs anymore. In actual fact, my good fellow Nigerians have been locked into this captivity of stagnation several decades back. For emphasis, Listen to Tayo additional again. So what we are witnessing today, for we to be it's not new at all. When I read things on WhatsApp or Facebook or people shouting, I just smile. You say, so you people don't know that what is playing out now is just a widening of what played out in the 1960s. The more things change, the more they remain the same. That's the story of Nigeria. So unless you read your history very well, you can't make sense of this complexity that we are going through in this country. And you need to read history. All of us Nigerians must also take note of our efforts towards what we call mass mobilization for self-reliance, and social justice and economic recovery. The people will not produce if there is no justice in the land. 
Therefore, part of the message of Mamba is this. Let there be social justice. The laborer deserves his wages. Let there be no cheating of the ordinary people. Because if you do that, there will be social unrest in the land. What am I talking about? Take a look at these visual excerpts on Mamsa in the 80s. I appeal to Jerry Ghana that issue. I equally appeal to the federal government that they should make food available to the P masses. Therefore, from the 60s to the 70s, to the 80s and on to the moment, the starvation continues. What we are all going through at the moment makes this period very weird, very strange, and you naturally don't want or feel comfortable to tell any Nigerians to sacrifice or give anything more because in their resilience, Nigerians have given so much. Yet, some people are still zealous with their spirit of patriotism and they are still wanting to give back. They are still keen on giving back. This brings us to the story of Yemi Shuloto, me, Badijo. In the mid-80s, moving on to the late 80s and early 90s, we were supposed to be taking giant strides. The infrastructures that were delivered were tremendous. And we were all very happy. The Mansa Trail was on, with a lot of enthusiasm, devotedly committed to its meanings, messages, and targets. This little child, calmly resting in my hand, yeah, came as a baby during the period of the Mamsa tree. His parents were members of the Mamsa team. All of us with great dreams of a wonderful future for a better Nigeria. This little child, his name is Jerry. You're Jerry, I'm told. And I was told that it's Jerry Ghana that gave you the name. Hmm? Hmm? Isn't that great? His parents were very proud that he beard, and still bears, I believe, that name, Jerry. Because the name Jerry was given to him by Jerry Gunner. And this Jerry will now be in his 30s. The question now, a part of the research question is, this our baby, this our Jerry, definitely will be in his 30s. He could even be a father now. Is he at this moment patriotic? Those are questions. <laughs> it's Jerry, isn't it? Yes. I heard it's Jerry who gave her the name. That's yes. great. Yes. That's a nice yes. little boy you've yes. got. <laughs> <laughs> Just speaking to the microphone. Yes. Speaker. How are you? Hi. Hi. Mamsa, highly successful. The result? an encouraging and fruitful election and what followed the annulment of a highly successful election explanation from the head of state my hands were tied our research question now could it mean that the usual reference to those who own nigeria that those who own Nigeria prefer stagnation to progress? Oh, how my compatriots, how Nigerians hate hearing those words. Those who own Nigeria or the cabal. So those are irritating phrases that Nigerians detest. Now, let's fast forward to 2024. In the year 2024, this lady is making a categorical statement on our youths and what they need now. We are always calling them the future of the, of the, you know, the, the next generation, the, the, future, the future of the future country. Of Nigeria. But we are not doing anything about that. What does this mean? Especially when it is coming from the principal of a secondary school, Mrs. Ronke Ugushino. What is being done? What actions are being taken? There is no denying it. We all, Nigerians, we have all been 
part of many performances. Yes, for the purpose of this our research exercise, we here refer to concrete, well-organized, different national performances. What kind of performances are we really referring to here? Well, one major performance that still stands out as significant and highly successful is the MAMSA program. MAMSA major success. I don't feel that every other part of Nigeria should be home for all Nigerians. That they should feel free to go to Oweri, they should uh, unsettle there and feel free to go to Enugu or Abeokuta and uh, Benin or Sokoto. So, I mean, if you can use this as a level of political awareness. Mamsa succeeded so well that our good Nigerians embraced the Muslim Muslim ticket of 1993 without any outer of doubt as regards the sincerity of the new spirit of nationalism. Dynamic, focused and sincere. Let's assume that people are feeling the pains of the situation for a change. Now how do you feel those who come from the rich families who feel? So there is the need for them, for them to be educated in a particular way to let them know that what is at stake is the future of this country and not whether you grab one money or the other. At this period, many other efforts were also in progress from many Nigerians in their different areas of endeavor to move the country forward. Here at our Lotto Studios, we had Okpaje. Okpaje was very successful, emphasizing the need to be proud of our diversity, to see our diversity as strength and not weakness. Also, at that point in time, we had a powerful drama serial featuring very successful media practitioners. One person that must be mentioned, our dear Auntie Anike Agbaje Williams. Auntie Anike Agbaje Williams was here mentoring through drama exercises, our youths on upholding our Omoluabi culture, on standing firmly with our cultural values, on realizing that it is wrong to bully. Bullying in secondary school is not right and must be discouraged. Look at this little dramatic excerpt. But you mustn't take advantage of the privileges you are given. Tell us now in your own words how you left your corner this morning. Can't you talk? Excuse me, ma. I was only a victim of circumstances. Now what is that supposed to mean? If I may explain now, it was not altogether Sheriff Atu's fault that our corner was disorganized. What happened then? It was Iyabo scattered our corner. Iyabo? You mean my Iyabo? Yes, ma'am. That's your Iyabo again? Iyabo was trying to take over Sheriff's bed by force. That's very bad. In actual fact, ma'am, Iyabo was molesting Sherry throughout yesterday evening and again this morning, saying all sorts of rude things to her. Okay. When things like this happen, you must come and make a report. And if I do that, then I get into more trouble. I can't run away from the dormitory, and I can't run away from my fate. You don't have to run away, Sherry. You are a senior girl. You are in class five. That doesn't remove my poverty. The problem is my poverty. I always ridicule my poverty. Omoluabi principles. Omoluabi ethos helped us to sustain our value system. Amoluabi recognizes the interest of the other person. Do unto others as you wish them to do unto you. Love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the Amoluabi. Civility, respect for other people, consideration for other people. We really need to bring back our family system because even our, our, the elderly people are losing their family. Not talk less of the children. And that's the need for us. At least let, let's teach our children. Let them know the family. Let them you know, understand the rich culture that we have as a nation. But what did we do? Did we hold on to it? The root of the problems that Nigerians, we Nigerians are going through now 
uh, stemmed from you know this deviation. We want to bring back memories of those glorious past. We are trying to you know uh, recreate what this glorious past was all about, and now we can you know recreate it you know within the present uh, society. Adekola succinctly with his statement encapsulates one of the major reasons why we are at where we are now. We started to ignore a value system. We indulge in taking the laws of etiquette and decorum for granted. Performing with Auntie Aniki Agbaji Williams here, Yemi Badejo. Yemi Badejo. Then in the mid 80s, then in secondary school, Queen School, Ibadan, to be precise, Jamie Badijo, acting at the Lotus Studios in the mid 80s. My foundation in meeting somebody like you years ago, right out of high school, 1987, 1988, that, that encounter with you for many years. Throughout my college days, throughout my University of Ibadan days, has formed who I am today. To know that there are certain values that will guide you in life to be successful. What is success? You taught us what success was. You took some of us that you didn't even know our parents. You brought us together and we were part of the projects that you were doing at Lotto then. You gave us a sense of belonging. You gave us a sense of worth, that we were worth something. You will, give, you will give us lines to read. We will read those lines. You will tell us to improvise. We will improvise. With Auntie Anike Agbaje Williams and others like Benga Falokbe, Jola Olu, Yomi Olu Gundudu, Sheyi Olu Dude, Femi Matiluko, Dayo Akomola Fe, Sheung Olu Ade, Tola Ajibola, Yemi Ajibade, with his artistic sincerity, our multi talented lady, Julie Koka, and many others who are part of this powerful dramatic exercise. <laughs> I love you. I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you know yeah. me too. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I love you. Yeah. I've done it. Yeah. Yes, you know me too. Yeah. I've done it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I've done it. I've done it. However, and sadly too, this dramatic exercise never got broadcast. Why? Because our socio-political environment created obstacles that made its broadcast absolutely impossible. The struggle continues. You can never give up on Nigeria. It's a great country. We're great people. And we just have, we're, we're just strayed a bit. We have to remind ourselves of our inheritance, of our heritage. Many of these youths traveled out, not Jakpa. Jakpa did not exist then. There was no Jakpa syndrome. They then traveled out, went for the Golden Fleas. During the time I traveled, there was no Jakpa syndrome at that time. And they are all doing very well in their different fields, including Yemi Badejo, who is now Yemi Sholoton Mrs. What is Yemi Shiloton doing now? This is what we are interested in as an outfit in research for social reformation. Yemi Badejo Shiloton with Impact Connect, giving back to the younger generation. Yemi Badejo Shiloton working with the younger generation in our alma mater, the Queen School. And they were all enthusiastic. They were all appreciative. They were all grateful. So it's not about being loud, it's about being a guiding light. Remember, because you have the power to make a difference in your own unique way. So I want you to say with me, I have the power, have the power. to make a difference. So 
why we keep emphasizing not deviating from our cultural values is because it upholds the ethics of positive social dynamics for interaction. In this case, we are talking about giving back. Giving back to the society. Remembering your yesteryears where you were cultivated and developed in your formative years. Your secondary school. Queen School to be precise. And Yemi Badejo. Now Yemi Shuloton coming back to give back to our alma mater. You gave some of us even jobs, holiday jobs, and you were paying us. And some of those jobs, the money I got from there, saw me through school. Why would I not use those values to give back? Did it succeed? Did it impact on the school? We must quickly point it out that we realize there are many more old students associations that are enthusiastically engaged in giving back to their various alma maters. We recognize that fact. Well, I really want to thank God for what has happened to me. I'm really encouraged. And I'm very proud of the initial daughter for the program that she has done for this uh, student. Uh, she will never know what she has done in the lives of these students until many years to come. I'm very, very happy. But I, I learned something from the lecturer. Oh, you, what do you learn yes, from the lecturer? I learned a new thing that you have to be bold, stand on your feet. You have to be what? Bold and stand on your feet. Whatever you want to do, do it with your passion. I'm glad that it has occurred to her to come and give back. Not minding the cost, the sacrifice, whatever it has entailed. The determination, because you need permission, you need logistics, and sometimes not all of them are easy to come by. But with that determination, I understand that this is worth whatever constraints we must overcome. It is well worth it. And she decided to give it whatever it will take. And that's it, that the dream in her mind now is fulfillment, joy, assurance. Even if it's only one student, pupil that was impacted today is a seat. To practically demonstrate our commitment, roll out the crew our technical crew, cameras, and move to support Yemi Shuloton in our endeavor to come and give back to our alma mater. And it must be pointed out that the school authorities, especially the principal, was exemplary in seeing the meaningful exercise as very important in impacting discipline, sincerity of purpose for the future, in the young students. The commitment of the Parents Teacher Association must be commended because we witness the presence of the president of the association in person of Fuluke Ayoride Onosoya. Mrs. Yamisha Gosson was here to, you know, to have a day program with our children and it was a wonderful program. I even commended her efforts and even the program, the, you know, the content of the program, I just realized that it's something that we needed to, you know, to do, not even for our schools alone, for our, for our girls alone, but for students of this nation. There's need for us to have a platform by which, you know, that particular program can touch much younger generation, both boys, girls, this and that. So that at the end of the day, the hope of the nation, you know, the, the, our aspiration concerning this country will be able to realize it. 
as we discuss and focus on our Yemi Badejo Shuloton, let us digress a bit and look into the world of another young man. In actual fact, this young man is only 26 years old, Anuluapo. And the title of his work is Emotion, a collection of poems. Look at the title. Examine the title. It is loaded. The title, Emotion, is loaded with metaphorical bearing. Anuluapo, in his emotion, talks about Nigeria. I now deliver to you an Oluwapo's poem on his country, Nigeria. Nigerians, notorious for investing in foreign education, yet allowing institutions at home wither away. Thieving leaders making a business of our beloved nation, all placed in power in a strategic array. They make a mockery of the concept of democracy, legally ruling through tyranny and oppression, fighting to secure their ill-gotten aristocracy in fear of the advent of succession, adorned with hideous gold while the citizens wear spectacular rags. They live in humble mansions, but in sprawling slums, the people reside. The national cake inhabits their Ghana must go bags. As corruption floods our country like a raging tide. I know you will want me to say, politicians are the problem. But aren't we all as guilty as them? Anoluapo John Adeshino was born in the 18th of March 1998 in Ibadan, Oyo State. Had his secondary education at Additional College in Ibadan here and pursued his BA in English and Creative Writing in Coventry University, Coventry, United Kingdom. Anolu Akbo is the winner of the 2016 Nando's Poetry Competition in Coventry. Anolu Akbo is back in Nigeria, conscientiously working as a patriot and looking for a way to move his country forward. The question, part of our research question now, is what are we doing to motivate, to encourage youths? What are we doing to ensure that they continue to be patriots, caring with love for the way forward for their country, Nigeria? Or are we just pursuing SUVs? At this point, we must examine the position of our Professor Akum Adebayo on our talents in diaspora, on our wish for them to come home. Young graduates who are even returning to Nigeria despite the present conglomeration of ups and downs loaded with absurdities of various discouraging traits. Some young Nigerians are still patriotically returning home. Listen to the position of Professor Akam Adebayo. The government of Nigeria has invited those abroad to come back home and help develop the country. Uh, but that invitation is very important, but it doesn't go far at all. What is important is what provisions were made, what changes have been made. Why did they leave in the first place? That is the position. How are we preparing the ground? for our people in diaspora are we just telling them to come back home and then do what how are we preparing for them let's say for example a medical doctor uh he's in atlanta and and he's thinking of coming to nigeria when he's talking to his fellow medical doctors in nigeria if he sees the way nigeria treats its medical doctors and he doesn't like that it's not going to come but if he sees that his fellow medical doctors are doing well they can operate in a conducive environment. The electricity doesn't go off while you're doing surgery, you know, and, and all those sort of things. Then they will say, hey, you know, I want to go and join my colleagues over there. 
and, and build a clinic or a hospital. Uh, you know, so once you make it conducive for people who live here, people abroad, you don't have to tell them. This episode has now firmly established that we in Nigeria are living in difficult times. We must again put it on record that this research exercise to be taking place at this critical time has been very, very challenging. We want to record this fact. However, we must at the conclusion of this episode emphasize one major point. That is, despite the ups and downs, despite the anguish and the adversity of the moment, some patriots are still caring for our beloved nation Nigeria, zealously continue to give back. Yes, they steadfastly continue to give back. The effort of young Anulu Apo is as impressive as laudable. Yemui Badejo Shulotan declares with determination Why would I not use those values to give back? And with all this, what will our social activists say to these individuals, Yemi Shulotan and many others? What will our social activists say to them in terms of recognizing how they are facing the moment? Those are the national heroes. Those are the national heroes. They don't have to do anything. They don't have to do anything. Once you stay in the comfort zone, why do you want to leave your comfort zone to change things here? For the better? You don't have to come. You don't have to bring money. You don't have to do anything. You know? And so if you do it, then of course. It's a consciousness that must be encouraged. It must be valued. You know? And it must be multiplied. In the conclusion of this episode, we just must emphasize one point again. The struggle continues. I believe we are not going to allow this dream to die. Why? We'll implore you to watch out for our next episode. Be wise.